Welcome to the purple party known as Purple Nerd Channel, a home for all those who geek out on all things Prince related. So in this episode, I'm going to take a quick break from what I normally do on the channel and talk about some Prince news and in particular, the 40th anniversary of Purple Rain, which of course is going to be this year. And you know, we're only, well actually we're less than six months away from celebration at Paisley Park, which is normally a three day event. And everyone has pretty much concluded at this point that the main focus of this year's celebration will be celebrating the 40th anniversary of Purple Rain. And it's a little scary with an event this big that we haven't heard any details on it at all, nor have we really heard any details about what will be released from the Prince Estate to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Purple Rain, other than the fact that we've simply been told that there will be a 40th anniversary release or special edition, whatever, of Purple Rain, the album, as well as the film itself, and no other details outside of that. So far, all we know that's coming this year is there will be a 40th anniversary of Purple Rain book by Andrea Swenson that will be released on May 14th. And that Purple Rain will be coming to Broadway as a stage play slash musical. And is being written by award-winning playwright Brandon Jacob Jenkins with Orrin Wolf producing and Lenina Blaine Cruz directing. And if I mispronounced any of those names, I do apologize. But let me be upfront and honest and say that when I first heard the announcement that Purple Rain was coming to Broadway and was going to be a live musical on stage, I was actually pretty excited about the whole concept because I remember uh, me and my wife, we uh, won a raffle ticket and we got uh, season tickets to a local theater here in St. Louis and it ended up being about eight different shows and we went to all eight shows and enjoyed every single one of them and one thing that I noticed when we went there that the crowd was made up of a lot of young people in their early 20s and it made me think that you know putting this on Broadway and having that younger crowd these are people they may not be fully aware of Prince and his music so this was another generation to hear his music which will help extend and grow the legacy of Prince and keep it going. But then I started thinking to myself, you know, there's going to be a lot of Prince songs being sung not by Prince and that made me a little bit worried. But then the article from the New Yorker was released and it went into the details of this upcoming production. And this is where things got really concerning for me. So first off, they're going to modernize it. And I was like, okay, you know, not having it take place in 1984, have it taking place in modern day, that would reach a wider audience. And I don't see a big deal with that. So I'm okay with that. And then they started to talk about the characters and Morris Day is now going to run a multimedia company and Apollonia is going to work for him in a division of his company that is focused on empowering women. And then the character that Prince played in the film, the kid, uh, that character is still there, but the kid gets mad that Apollonia is dating Morris and so he performs, I guess that they're going to do it like, you know, he uploaded onto the internet the song Darling Nikki. I knew a girl named Nikki, I guess you could say she was a sex fiend. Which uh, he gets convicted of slut shaming and ends up getting via text messages and throughout social media, he ends up getting canceled. So Prince's character, the star of the original film in this modernized version will be canceled. And I guess the whole storyline will be him trying to get uncanceled and bring himself back to fame of some kind. And probably the worst part of this whole article is the reason why it's so different is because he's not writing it from the original script which was written by 
Albert Magnoli and, and William Blinn. Instead, he's going to write it from the spirit of the songs from the film because he was quoted in New Yorker saying that he believes that Purple Rain is a bad movie. So the dude is writing this play based on a movie that he does not like. And mind you, this is his first musical as well. And actually, he wasn't confident that he could do a good adaptation of this script to begin with. But his producer is pushing him, saying that if anyone can do it, it's you. So he's not even sold on himself that he can do a good job. And he's already been quoted as saying that he didn't like the film to begin with. But the only thing we can kind of look forward to is the fact that he was also quoted by saying that they haven't even done a third draft of the script yet, which means it's unfinished because they haven't started anything on the production as of yet. I mean, they haven't even cast anybody yet. But I guess if it's going to be all modernized, then I guess they're going to go ahead and modernize the music as well, which means we'll have the same Pro Tools Loop Sample 105 of a triple hi-hat and drum and bass kit that they put on every song nowadays. And I hope you don't think that I'm the only one who's upset about this production because that's not the case. There's a whole lot of Purple family members and Prince fans that are super unhappy about this production. And there's a whole lot of people who worked on the film Purple Rain that are really unhappy about it, especially Jill Jones, because she went on Twitter slash X or whatever we're calling this week, and she went off on this production. And I'll go ahead and put a picture of her tweet right here on the screen. Go ahead and pause the video so you can read it. And make sure you reread a couple times because there's some things that she's like in your face about, but there's also some cryptic messages in there too. And since we're talking about concerns about the 40th anniversary of Purple Rain, a big concern is going back to celebration because, you know, you need to let people know ahead of time what's going on at celebration because you know, some of us have schedules that we have to work with. I mean, I run a small business, I have a family, and I run this YouTube channel. So my schedule is pretty tight. So I need to know what's going on each day. Because one, how many days? Is it just going to be the regular three days? Is it going to be one day? Is it going to be a whole entire week being that it's Purple Rain that's being celebrated? And I need to know the itinerary. I need to know what's going on in each day because my schedule will not let me do multiple days. I'm going to have to pick the day with the most stuff on it that I want to see and I'm going to have to make it for that day. And with it being less than six months away, you should have that already planned out because matter of fact, you should have planned this out like two years ago. But unfortunately for like the last year and a half, the Prince Estate has been in litigation and like two or three weeks ago, it was announced that they're back in litigation as now the heirs are trying to throw out the management team of the Prince Estate. Not talking about Primary Wave, which is the other half, you know, owners of the whole Prince Estate, but the heirs and the current management team, now they're going back into litigation, which is not a good time when it's the 40th anniversary of Purple Rain. But back to this whole getting things scheduled, there's a lot of people that need to be at this 40th anniversary celebration. And those people have schedules too. So you need to get contracts signed and get them booked like, again, like two, three years ago to make sure that they'll be there. And I hate to bring it up, but some of those people, there are some broken relationships between them and the Prince Estate that needs to be fixed before they'll probably show up. Because I can tell you right now, you're not doing it right if you don't have at least more stay and Jerome Benton there and all the members of the time, all the members of Apollonia 6 gotta be there, all the members of the revolution have to be there, of course, Des Dickerson and the Modern Airs have got to be there. Jill Jones has to be there. Sheila E., who was on the tour for Purple Rain, has to be there. Albert Magnoli needs to be there. And Olga Carlotas have got to be there as well. And 
pretty much anybody who worked on the film crew that worked on wardrobe or makeup like all the people behind the scenes of purple rain have got to be there as well and anybody that was on staff or was part of the management team for first avenue they gotta be there too and no not all the artists have to perform some of them can just be on panels doing discussions but they need to at least be there for this to be a proper celebration and the only way this is going to happen is if you started planning this years ago and with all the legal issues they've been dealing with and litigation i don't know if the 40th anniversary of the purple rain album is going to be as super deluxe as we think it's going to be it is probably going to be the same super deluxe edition that we got before but repackaged and the new packaging that they've been doing the super deluxe editions like they did with diamonds and pearls and sign of the times where it's really big and you have a book in there so it's probably just going to be the same exact stuff we got before and then they'll probably throw in the uh, revolution live collection in there and then probably take andrea swenson's new book about the 40th anniversary of purple rain and throw that in there as the actual book and that's what they're going to give us even though we all know that there are actually still a few vault tracks that weren't included on the original Super Deluxe Edition that we got a couple years ago. And we all know that there are several alternate takes of songs that made it on the album as well. Plus, we have all of the other artists that were involved in the soundtrack to the movie, but weren't included on the album. So all the Times music and Apollonia 6's music needs to be on there. The Modern Airs, their one song needs to be on there. The score of the film needs to be on there. And speaking of the Time and Apollonia 6, there were alternate takes of those songs as well. And there were songs for both of those projects that didn't make it on the album. So there's vault tracks for those as well. You can put all of that together and make a super duper duper deluxe edition. But unfortunately, I don't think that's what we're going to get. I really do think, and I'm, I really hope I'm wrong, but I think we're just going to get a repackaging of what we already got. But who knows? I'll put this video out and two weeks later, they'll go ahead and drop 35 different things that they're going to release to celebrate Purple Rain. And who knows? Maybe... They're going to use Celebration to kick it off, and after Celebration, they'll start releasing all these different projects and pretty much celebrate Purple Rain from Celebration to the 41st anniversary of the album and movie. And speaking of the movie, I'm still holding out for that not just remastered edition of the film, but like remastered with a 4K restoration from the original negative and including all the original scenes that were cut out. And I know there's people out there that are like, no, that's not Prince's vision. That's why those were cut out. Well, a lot of that was cut out to get the R rating that it got. But let me tell you something. You can go ahead and release it with the theatrical cut restored. And then you can also have on the same collection the version of it with all the cut scenes added into it. And doing this with older films is something that's not unheard of. I am a huge horror film fan, and there's a company out there called Scream Factory, and this is what they do. They take old movies from the 80s and 90s and even the 70s, and they dig around and find old cut footage, and they put it back in the film. Sometimes when they do this, the film is so damaged that they can pretty much only get it up to about a 2K restoration. And in some cases, it looks just like a VHS transfer. And they put it back in the film. But they always include the theatrical version of it cleaned up. And then they have the uncut version as an alternative that you can watch as well. So you still get both options. A good example of that is the film called Silent Night, Deadly Night they literally found lost footage at one of the producers homes in his basement and they were able to clean that up and add it back into this film so i'm pretty sure the same thing can happen to a film like purple rain and since we're talking about films and we're talking about prince news and prince related news dealing with film there is a biographical film about vanity aka denise matthews coming 
actress Nova Yara has the lead role playing Vanity and was actually handpicked by Denise Matthews aka Vanity before her passing as a biographical film about her life had been in the works for years. The title of this film and the release date is still unknown at this time. If you don't mind, please go ahead and like this video and please subscribe to the channel. And if you got the time, go ahead and check out my Patreon page and consider being a member. Until that next episode, I wish you heaven.